Oh boy, oh boy, get ready for a long one. Um, welcome to another episode of An Opinionated Guide to Pandas, where you get to hear about a, you know, a real data scientist and their using of pandas. And I will tell you some of the functions that I use, and I will tell you a lot about the functions that I do not use at all, and so hopefully, hate, and so hopefully, and hopefully save you some time uh, in the process when you're learning about pandas. So let's get started. Um, today we're learning about combining data frames. And this is probably the most, if not, well, it's, it's definitely in the top three of most important things you do with pandas. Um, up there with indexing and selecting, uh, group buys, and then this. It's, it's super important. Um, so why did I put it so far in the back? Because it is, unfortunately, it requires a lot of different information to go ahead and make this work. So there are four ways to go ahead and merge data frames in pandas. Uh, there are merging, joining, concatenating and appending. Um, so merging and joining are basically the same operation. Uh, they're just different ways to do it. Uh, I personally really like merging instead of joining, um, but there are probably people on the opposite end of the bandwagon. So I'm not going to be teaching about joining at all. So if you if you want to, if you really like joining, then, well, you should probably listen to this because I think you could learn something about merging. Um, Otherwise, if you've not really sort of been experienced with merging or joining, you only really need to know one. Um, and Whatever one you want to use will serve you equally well. Um, and concatenating and appending are also uh, redundant. Uh, maybe redundant is a strong word. There are different ways of doing something very similar. Uh, and so the one I use is concatenating. Uh, and so I'll be teaching it here. Um, so you'll not be hearing anything about joining or anything about appending. Um, but again, they are the same as these things here. But if you really like them, go ahead and leave a comment below. Uh, let me know. And if you've got any tutorials that you think are really great for joining or, or appending, you can go ahead and leave them in the comment below. I, I love this stuff. Um, really, the nice thing about pandas is you can make it your own. Uh, and or you can make it and you or you can make it my own and just do exactly what I do. Um, so as always, I've left some documentation references here. So if you're interested in seeing the full documentation, click on the link. But it's really long. Um, so be warned. Let's get started. We have the tips data set, and this is the data set we've used throughout. Um, in this case, I'm going to be separating the tips data set into two things. So I'm going to have one, which is the tips data set with total bill tip. Um, and I've got another one with uh, total bill tip. And I'll go ahead and delete the tip from the tips bill, and I'll go ahead and delete the tip or the total bill from the tips tip. So I've got two different data frames, one with total bill and the other with tip. So just pretend that they were never combined in the first place and we want to go ahead and combine them right now. Um, we've got two different columns to go ahead and combine them on. So we've got male, yes, and, or sorry, male, female, and smoker, yes, no. So we need to go ahead and join them in a very specific way. So how would we go about and do this? So there's two ways, again, join or merge. Um, merge is my particular favorite. If you look at merge, it has a very long function definition with lots and lots of parameters. And unfortunately, a lot of these parameters are useful. So we're going to have to go over them. I know, but we'll get through it together. So the first way we can go ahead and we can do merging is we can merge on indices. So we've got these two things. They've got the exact same index. So sex smoker, sex smoker with the exact same things inside. You know, be very careful if you're trying to merge a data frame with, uh, let's say, smoker as one zero and smoker as true and false, you will get errors. So you need to make sure their types are the same if you're going to be merging on indices or anything else. Um, in this case, we can go ahead and specify that we are merging on indices by saying the right index is true and left index is true. And ta-da, we get the merge. But there are even more ways. We can merge on columns themselves. So I will reset the index. So let me just show you what a reset index looks like in this case. Uh, give me one second. Uh, so it looks just like this. It's sort of like a data frame with just lots of columns. And we can specify on which columns to go ahead and join, to merge. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and merge on sex and smoker. So same thing. Uh, now notice that the output is a little bit different. So in this case, it kept the index here. In this case, uh, because we were merging on data frames that didn't have any indices to begin with, the sex and smoker stay out of the index. Uh, we can actually go ahead and merge, or it can actually go ahead and infer these itself. Uh, so we don't even need to spec uh, specify sex or smoker. Uh, I do think it makes the code much clearer if you go ahead and do so, but it will figure it out. 
it will go ahead and say like, okay, these co these data frames have sex and smoker in common. They don't have total bill or tip in common. So I'll figure out the merge. Um, you can go ahead and merge on half index and then the other half on the uh, actual columns. So I'll reset the index for the total bill, but I'll keep the index for the tips tip. Um, so you can sort of see that here. Um, and we can go ahead and we can do some interesting combinations. So for example, I can reset the index uh, to level zero for my tips bill and get this sort of tips bill strange. So I've got one index that is smoker and one index that is, or not an index, but a column that is sex and then the actual total bill. And I can go ahead and do this merge. Um, and as long as I specify the on in both cases, it will go ahead and pick up this smoker from the index as well. So we can do it. So you've been noticing the typical, um, what I would call inner join SQL functionality, but there are different ways to go ahead and do it. So instead of just matching up sex goes to male and smoker goes to yes, so let's go ahead and match up the tip here and the total bill here, uh, we can go ahead and do different types of joins. So we can go ahead and do a left join. So in this case, I went ahead and only took the top two rows of our tips tip data set. So the left join will go ahead and take everything in tips total bill, so the bill data set, and it will merge it with whatever is in tips tip, even if there's nothing there. And if there's nothing there, it will just replace it with a NAN. Okay, kind of cool. Uh, if you do an inner join, it will go ahead and not actually do the merge for places where both of these don't exist. So in this case, no merge. If I go ahead and I take the head and the tail, I can show you what an outer join looks like. And you guys probably already know this. But we'll go ahead and get a NAN for the, uh, oh, sorry. So we'll go ahead and get a NAN right here for the tips, and we'll get a NAN right here for the total bill. Uh, notice I also put in this indicator equals true. This will show you what type of merge was done. So in this case, both were here, both were here, the left only was here, and the right only was here. So kind of cool. Uh, the final thing that is really useful in this case is if we are merging things with uh, the same column, so in this case, we merge the tips bill with the tips bill, we can specify suffixes. So the tips bill from the left will go ahead and tips, get tips bill left, and the tips bill from the right will get tips bill right. And you can specify whatever suffix you would want in this case. So you kind of learn about merging. And what merging does, as you've basically been guessing, is it does SQL-like joins, um, so SQL-like merges. Um, it basically takes different columns from different data frames and it puts them all together into a single data frame. Um, it's one of the most complex parts of Pandas, but without sort of knowing about it, without understanding it, it's very hard to get right. So hopefully this sort of shows you all the different ways you can go ahead and make these combinations work. Um, if you are less familiar with merging itself, if you're less familiar with SQL itself, um, I've not done a tutorial on this myself, but I've gone ahead and I've included a link in the description that will get you up to speed on what SQL joins and mergers are like in the first place. Uh, and then once you understand that, understanding pd.merge is pretty simple. It's just the syntax that's a little bit confusing. Okay, so we've got pd.merge down. We're really comfortable with it. But what happens if we want to join more than one data frame? Or what happens if we want to join data frames on top of each other? So not merge their columns, but merge their rows. Uh, so in this case, we go ahead and we use our handy dandy concatenation function. So the concatenation function is pretty dang simple. Uh, you go ahead and you specify pd.concatenate and you can specify as many different types of, uh, of data frames as you want. Now, the, um, there are some caveats here. So first, let's go ahead and let's do this. So notice, um, we went ahead and we added these row-wise. Um, the pd.concat, it goes ahead and concatenates these guys uh, just by stacking the data frames on top of each other. You need to have similar columns to do this. So you need to have tip spill and tip. Um, similar indices also helps. If you don't have similar columns, you'll get NANs. Uh, so in this case, total bill, because tips bill only contains total bill and tips tip only contains tip, we get NANs for these first parts and then we get NANs for these second parts. If that's the desired behavior that you want, totally fine. It's just a caveat that you should have. Um, now you can also do this in a column-wise fashion as well. So in a column-wise fashion, it will do the join just as before, but it only does that join if you have the indices set correctly. So the tips bill and the tips tip need to have the exact same index. And of course you can do this with, you know, more than one of these guys. So you can have lots and lots of these guys. Um, so it makes concat super powerful, so it can do as many data frames as you want, but it's not as extensible. Uh, so you can't necessarily specify, oh, I want some from the index, some from the columns. Um, I want to set the left suffix to be this, right suffix to be that. Um, 
The final thing you can do is you can go ahead and specify where it comes from. Uh, this is kind of cool. So in this case, you can add an extra index here that goes ahead and says like, oh, this comes from this total bill and this comes from this tip. Um, this can be useful if you're concatenating lots of different data sources and maybe the where the data source comes from is important. So that's it. Um, this is one of the most confusing topics in pandas and I think the reason why is because people don't um, they don't understand that merge and, and join are the, it's the exact same functionality uh, and they, all, they don't understand that append and concat the exact same functionality. They don't understand kind of what concat versus merge are for. If you've got multiple data frames, you need to use concat. If you're trying to merge rows together, so if you're trying to stack rows on top of each other, you, you need to use concat. Uh, otherwise, you can use pd.merge and you get a lot more flexibility for it. Uh, so this means you can, you, as you can see, there's so many different ways of merging things. I think we went over five or ten, or five or ten. We went over about five to seven different ways. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. This is one of the most important parts of um, of pandas, and and I, and I hope you guys learned some of it. There's even more actually as well. There's a couple of different ways to merge data, um, and I've used these once or twice. I, I've used merged ordered once. Um, but they're called combine first, merge order, and merge as of. Um, if you guys want to see a little tutorial of me going over these things, they are a little bit useful, but I think they're like long tail useful. So for as many times as you do a merge, you'll, uh, so if you do a merge like 100 times, you'll probably be doing merged ordered uh, once. Okay, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like button. Otherwise, go ahead and comment. Let me know what you thought and see you next time.